All right, guys, welcome back to the third video of this Django Python web development series. And I'm really excited about today because finally we are going to be actually printing out something on a web browser using our Django project. So right now it displays just this uh, default Django page which says the install worked successfully. But soon we are going to be printing out hello world and stuff like that on our web browser. So let's get started. But before that, we have to learn something about apps. All right, inside Django, apps are a little bit different. So if you have a, a little bit of an idea of what an app is, it's probably uh, an Android app or a web app or uh, some kind of an iPhone app. So what I want you to do is forget everything or what you know about an app, all right? Make sure that uh, in terms of uh, Zen Buddhism, make sure that your cup is empty and it's not filled with water. I'm just going to fill it with new water. So right now your cup is empty and you have forgotten about the meaning of what an app is because it's different uh, in Django. So in Django, you can think of an app as different parts of a website. So if we go to this website, um, it's just a website, default website. Uh, it might be a little bit different after some time, so don't uh, like count on it or anything. But let's say, for example, this website was there and this website was a big app, all right? So this website is just a big app. Now I've created this blog on my this one app and this blog can be thought of as an another app. Let's say now I've created a forum, not this build with Python. Let's say I've created some uh, some random, maybe this Python forum.io. I've created this forum and now inside this forum, I want another blog. So what I can do instead of creating a blog from scratch, I can just take this blog app from my build with Python website and I can import this blog app inside this python forum.io. This is not my website, by the way, it's just a Python forum. <laughs> and this is also just a, like a temporary thing. So just uh, if you see it in future and if it doesn't exist, don't just like comment or do something, all right? <laughs> so anyways, uh, so this is one app that we are gonna create. And in future, uh, when we are going to be adding a blog to our personal website, I'm not sure whether we are going to be adding or not, but most probably we are. So let's say our personal website is one app. So let's create a app for a personal website. How do we do that? So we just press CTRL Alt plus R or on our manage.py file. And uh, you can also do that if you don't remember from uh, this tools option, run manage.py task. And over here, what we can do is we can just write, uh, let's actually uh, create an app. So for that, just write start app and then the name of the app. So I'm just gonna call it my site and press enter. So this is gonna create this my site uh, folder. Now, if you want to create another app and call it a blog, we can just write start app and then we can call it blog. And this is gonna create the blog app for us. And then we can use this blog app on a different website, like for example, a forum or somewhere else. So we don't have to like create it again and again. Uh, so this is one of the cool parts about an app. And that is how an app is different uh, than in like Android apps or iPhone apps, all right? So if you are not able to understand what an app is, don't worry about it. Just keep following what I am doing. And after some time, you'll have a very good idea of what an app is. When I just started out using Django, I remember I was very, very confused about an app. Like what an app is, what the heck? Like it's a little bit different and weird in Django. So you just kind of following and you just keep of like hustling on a little bit and just keep following the videos that I'm putting out and uh, you'll be fine. You'll be perfectly fine. All right, so I've created this my site app right now. So let's actually discuss what is inside this my site app. So first it has migrations, which are empty because we haven't uh, like added any kind of database inside our my site app and there are no changes. That's why this migration folder is empty. And then there's init.py, which is basically required by Django. You don't have to touch it. Then there is this admin.py. So what is this admin.py? So this is kind of to add like databases and uh, uh, so what is this models over here? Register your models. So models are basically database layouts. All right. For example, tables and stuff like that. Uh, database structures. Models are basically database structures. Yeah. And when you want to add these database structures uh, inside this uh, admin dashboard, then we are going to use this admin.py file. So right now we don't have any use. And then this apps.py is basically, basically the settings of this my site app. Uh, we are not gonna touch it right now. Then whenever we need to declare any kind of databases, uh, you know, just in the normal website, for example, if let's say we are creating uh, a blog and we want to create a table 
for the title of the blog, for the sub caption of the blog, for the images in the blog and the body of the blog, then we are going to be creating some models over here, which is going to be like body, body model, because it will contain the body of the blog and then maybe uh, the title model. All right. So we are going to be creating these kind of models inside this model dot file, uh, which we are going to be focusing on in the coming videos. Then there is test.py. This is basically for testing and stuff in Django, Django Python web development. Uh, it requires a lot of testing because you have to make sure that the website works correctly. And then there is views.py, which is actually a pretty important file. It's actually a, one of the most really important files. And you'll be like just going back to, back to this views.py file a lot. So what is this views.py file? So this views.py file is actually responsible for displaying stuff on your web browser. Let's actually, let me just actually remove that. So this is actually responsible. This views.py file is responsible for displaying stuff on your browser. So what happens is when you visit a URL, for example, let's say this 12127.0.18000, it goes to this uh, urls.py file as we discussed. And if you have typed in admin in the front, then it goes to the dashboard. But if you have typed in something else, for example, like let's say hello or test, then it goes to this views.py by because we are going to be writing something like go to the views file over here. And then it goes to this views.py file and then it searches for the function that we have called somewhere over here. Uh, so this is where this views.py file comes in. So I'm going to be going into what this render thing is in maybe the coming videos, maybe in the next video even, but I don't know yet, I haven't decided yet. But for this, uh, this, uh, this video, this third video, what we're gonna do is, instead of this, we're gonna write from django.http import HTTP response. All right. And then we're going to create a function and let's call this function index. And this function is going to take in a parameter of request. And then inside this, we are going to return HTTP response. And inside this, let's just write, uh, you know, hello, hello world is a little bit overused. So I'm just going to write hello boys. I don't know. Uh, hashtag no homo. <laughs> So what is happening over here? All right. So from django.http, we imported a cool thing called HTTP response. All right. So this HTTP response is basically responsible for displaying stuff on your browser. All right. So this is what HTTP response is doing basically. So when this function is called, it takes this parameter or it gets this thing called request. What is this request? So whenever we press enter after uh, typing in the URL, if we have pressed enter, then there is a request sent and this request is stored. The contents of that request are stored inside this variable of request. Obviously over here, we are not doing anything with the request, but in the future we will be is actually pretty important, but this is the meaning of this request. I can remove it if I want to, but I'll just let it be here because it looks good. And then what we are saying is whenever this index function is called, make sure you return this HTTP response of hello boys. So that is one of what it's going to do. But right now there's no way of uh, kind of calling this index function inside this views.py file. So what we are going to do is we are just going to copy. Oh no shit. What have I done? Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to copy this and uh, just paste this below this. And then instead of uh, admin, I'm just going to write like hello over here and uh, not hello w hello over here. And uh, then I'm going to import this views.py file. So as you can see, these are two different things. So my website is actually the project folder and this my site is the app folder. So what I need and this urls.py file is inside this project folder. So what I want to do is I want to access the views.py file of this my site app. That's why we'll have to import it inside this urls.py file. So what we can do is we can just write from, uh, we can write my site dot views import everything. All right. We can just write index, but I just written import everything. And then instead of this admin site dot URLs, we can just write index and we don't need these brackets. And that's pretty much it. So what's going to happen is if we go to our website and type in hello over here, not hello W hello over here is going to go to this uh, urls.py in our project folder It's going to open this urls.py file up, then it's going to import the views uh, file from this uh, my site app because we have written it over here and then it's going to go to the URL patterns. It will see have we written hello or admin over here. It, say, it says have we written admin over here 
and obviously we haven't so it doesn't execute this path or this URL pattern but it sees that we have actually written hello in the second URL pattern therefore it executes this index function inside this my site views so it goes to this views.py file which is inside our my site app and it executes this return HTTP response so let's go back to our manage.py and we're just gonna run the server again so that everything is working well uh, let's do it all right now we can just uh, yeah just type in let's actually just type in nothing first all right there's no extension no there's no backslash and stuff after the 8000 so it says page not found it basically says hey i am i matched admin i matched hello and what you have written there's nothing after this backslash right so what you have written is uh, not matching our url patterns so i don't know what to do page not found 404 error but if we type in uh, let's type in hello over here and uh, press enter as you can see we have finally printed out hello boys so congratulations so finally you have printed something out on your web browser all right so this is what is happening all right now this is not the right way to do it first of all i just wanted to make sure that this is kind of a hacky way to do it and you shouldn't do it this way now the way the proper way to do it is actually so I, i'll just give you a scenario all right let's imagine that your website is very very big it contains a lot of apps all right it, it contains a lot of apps it contains a blog it contains a forum my personal website it has a project uh, app it has like maybe like say five apps all right normal projects normal startups have like crazy like 10 15 20 apps all right crazy amount of apps even a very basic website so yeah right now over here we uh, have just one app my site that's why we can just write in stuff inside our main personal website project folder all right so what we need to do is instead of writing it over here we can just create a new urls.py file inside this my site app so what we are going to do is we are going to create a new python file and let's just call it urls.py just like over here let's just call it urls.py click on ok so now my site urls.py we have it now we can just copy this from over here paste this over here these two urls.py are basically the same i'm just not importing the first part because uh, we don't need the admin dashboard in our uh, my site app it is already there in the dashboard of uh, the main part so i'm not going to import that and then i'm going to just copy and paste this url patterns from over here let's paste this over here we don't need this admin one so let's remove that and uh, uh, let's actually make sure that uh, we remove this from here and we don't need this right now so let's remove all of that all right uh, this is our personal website urls.py and we are just making sure it goes back to the state that it was in all right so let's uh, actually close this up now what we are doing in in this urls.py is it this urls.py is actually inside this my site folder as you can see we have created a new file so what we need to do similarly just like we did in the uh, previous urls.py file we need to import this views.py inside this urls.py so that we can call this index function so we're just gonna write um, from dot import views all right so what this dot means is basically from inside this folder import views so from this folder is basically my site from my site uh, import views and then we can over here we can just write views dot and then the name of the uh, function that you want that is the index we don't need these brackets and that's pretty much it yeah this looks pretty good so what's going to happen from now on is if you open the urls.py file of this thing we need to add something over here so let me just uh, copy this from over here because right now what is happening let, let me just give you an example of what is happening right now all right so if we just press enter from over here let me see if the server is running oh shit the server is not running but let's say uh, let's say we have uh, pasted the website over here and we have uh, maybe put in let's say hello over here all right so it goes to this first it goes to the project folder that is the personal website and it checks this urls.py over here it sees okay there is no admin all right and then there is nothing else in the url patterns so it quits and gives you a 404 uh, not found error all right not page not found error it never reaches this my site uh, app and it never reaches this urls.py so what we need to do is add another url pattern basically let's paste this over here give it a tap i'm sorry if i'm going a little bit too quickly 
but it's pretty pretty obvious stuff so if you have any problems you can just contact me it's not a problem all right so instead of this admin um, we can just write uh, let's make it empty so what we are saying is hey if it's not admin and if it is something else just go to this uh, urls.py in my site app and how do we do that we need to import uh, another thing inside uh, our uh, urls.py as you can see there is actually they have written it over here add a url to url patterns path blog and then we have written include blog.urls whenever you want to import urls of another app you can just write that down so i'm just going to copy this actually i'm so lazy so i'm just going to copy this over here include and instead of blog.urls i'm just going to write my site.urls because that is what we are importing so what is going to happen right now is it's going to go if we let's say if we enter this thing 12.0.18000 hello it's going to go to this uh, urls.py of personal website project folder it's going to go to the url patterns it's going to check whether it's admin or not if it's not admin then it's going to come to this path which says if it's not admin then include my site.urls then it's going to go to this urls.py file inside the my site app and then it's going to check for hello if it's if it's there then it's going to go to this views dot uh, oh shit. Then it's going to go to this views dot index. So it's going to come to this views dot pi file, and then it's going to call this index function, and it's going to return this uh, hello boys over here. Let me actually change this to hello world because I don't know why hello boys are looking looking a little bit weird. So let's change it to hello world. <laughs> so anyways, let's go back to our manage dot pi file, and we're going to run the server again. So just to check if it's working or not. So now if we just press enter, it's going to give us the not found error. But if we press, let's just type in hello, it's going to show you hello world. So now that we know it's working. All right, guys, this was a pretty long video, 17 minute video. And my voice is actually just going off a little bit. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but my voice is a little bit breaking down and my throat is a little bit hurting. So yeah guys, this is pretty much it for this video and I'm really proud of this video because we have finally implemented something on our web browser and we have printed hello boys and hello world on our web browser. So in the next video, we are going to be uh, upping the ante a little bit and we are going to be implementing the render functionality and stuff like that, maybe create something uh, in models. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you on uh, video four and yeah, peace out.